<laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and jump into some uh, some games. Um, so just some slight changes to the show format. We're just going to go ahead and push up um, new releases up to the top. And yeah, then we're just going to go from there. Uh, who here has played Returnal? Uh, I have. You I have. have. I have. I only did like four hours, but I have. I- I'm not privileged enough to own a PS5. You just gotta wait outside a Target at like two in the morning and then no, fight don't off do crazy that. moms. No. <laughs> you, got, you have to fight off that. trading card game people. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. I forgot about that. Uh, that I mean, Target's now banning trading cards? Because you just someone straight up took them out. <laughs> I'm Someone fine with trading card game people. I'm tired of trading card game scalpers. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, true. Shit. Um, so I have Returnal. My girlfriend got it for me for my birthday. <laughs> but knowing how shit my backlog is at the moment, I'm just like, I'm not going to be able to get through this in like a timely manner. So uh, Mesa actually has my copy. Um, he's not here today to talk about it. I guess we'll talk about it maybe next week. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts on it, sir? Oh, uh, so I should probably preface this by saying that I'm not a roguelike person. It's not my favorite genre. Uh, I think the only I don't even think I enjoyed roguelikes as much as like more as much as anybody here. Um, but what got me interested in Returnal is the fact that it's obviously like a it's a female main character. It's it, it's an older protagonist, which we don't normally see, save for like old grizzled white dudes. So it was really interesting. Um, and just the world of it, and also the fact that it's fucking gorgeous. Like, it's an incredibly pretty game. Uh, it runs pretty good on the PlayStation 5. Um, the powers are incredibly cool. The whole idea of, even if you die, you keep the, like, character upgrades that you get. So, like, you then think you get, like, a melee weapon within the first couple hours, and even if you die, you still keep that. So it's not like it strips everything away from from you. And another thing that I really like about the game is the fact that the story is told to you sort of in a Hades sort of way. So even if you die, um, the story will come at you a little bit faster. It's like almost every death brings in more of the of the story, which I'm a really big fan of. It it was incredibly interesting for the four hours that I did play. I did have to stop it because I'm playing like other stuff, but and also the oh my god the difficulty and the bosses get fucking nuts <laughs> and it and you you don't know anxiety until you go to a boss and you have like no health and then the boss is like some weird lovecraftian horror that has like skin wings and you're like ah <laughs> You're like, and, I didn't uh, sign up for this. <laughs> in terms of difficulty, and I saw Jeff Grubb uh, tweeting about this a while ago. We had a little back and forth. Um, is, do you feel like some of the difficulty can stem from the fact that it's a... Um, just from like even the camera perspective, how it's kind of like tight in there? Because like my issue with Hades was even though it's isometric and you can see ev- like everything like within your peripheral vision just like from that view, mm-hmm. I had a hard time with Hades because since the camera is so fu- was so um far pulled back that I had a hard time like reading enemy animations like if they're getting ready to prime for an attack. So my initial thought um for someone who hasn't played it I was like, "Oh, if the camera is pulled further in it's just over the shoulder, you are able to see it." But that kind of also brings in the issue of enemies sneaking up behind you, which apparently is a very big issue. And would that so, even be something that would be like remedied if you're like playing with a mouse where you can just like flip around in a split second? So from when I played, there was some indication if there was an enemy behind you. So if there was something off screen attacking you, there would be some sort of ring in, in indication telling you that, that there was something coming from that direction. And I found that that helped very much, but it didn't show you how close something was. So I would think, oh, I can dodge as soon as this ring comes up. I dodge and something still hits. So it's like a weird, like, it tells you when something's behind you, but it doesn't give you, like, a straight reticule. You still have to, like, get the timing of it. Yeah, and I mean, the best way I can describe it is how... I'm gonna compare it to how Near Replicant and Near Automata does it, which is, yes, it's it's third person, but a lot of the boss fights and a lot of the enemy encounters, 
you can see what's in front of you and you can see the like little like ball um ball things coming towards you but you can tell when something's close to you or not you have a chance to dodge you have a chance to like attack and like take them out before they hit you while in returnal they stay like some of the times they would just pass through things so i wouldn't have a chance to hide behind a tree but no, like normally i would um, I just feel like in Returnal, the way that it's so fast-paced and how close it is to you, I do kind of have to agree with that, is that, like, stop, like, there will be a lot of enemies in a single room, and you have to literally, like, micromanage, like, are you going to take out what's farthest from, from you, or do you have a shotgun right, right now, I mean, you have to get close. It's like, it's, I'm not a fan of the big micromanagement, especially when you enter a, a, a room and, like, five enemies spawn. And they're different types of enemies, so you have to, like, remember what each enemy does. So it's, like, that panic of just, like, uh, okay, which one's gonna kill me first? Which one do I have to take out first? I mean, the game has a reactive AI to it. So if you die to a specific enemy, um, the game will, in, in your next run through, may do something different to that enemy. It may lower the damage that it, that, that, that it does to you. It may stop it from doing a specific attack that, like, fucked with you. Um... And it will, um, it will sometimes not spawn that enemy, depending on how much that you die from it. Um, mm -hmm. So it, it it has little like difficulty choices like that. But because uh, I'm currently playing Hades on my Switch, I'm having a blast. By the way, Meg wrecked my ass today, which was not fun. But um, the one thing I like about Hades is in in that type of roguelike, you know why you died. Either I'm a dumbass that ran into a spike spike trap, or I wasn't paying attention to what was attacking me. When I play R Returnal, when I die, I almost don't feel like I didn't learn anything, because either the death was kind of bullshit and the game kind of stunlocked me, or I the game hadn't given me anything good to use mm -hmm. gun-wise. One, one issue I've so. seen, like, even from pacing, that seems, like, kind of antithetical to, um, to roguelikes or rogue... rogue Quick segue. What the fuck is the difference between a rogue light and a rogue like? I don't even fucking don't know. know anymore. It, there there is some know. proper distinction that I've heard, but I just it just passed over my head. But um, one, one issue I've I've seen that's like antithetical to like that design is that uh, I guess like once you clear enemies out, you can still like explore the map for stuff. Yes. Whereas yeah. like in Hades, there's not really much to explore and even stuff in Spelunky where if you hang out on a map too long, like a ghost will pop up and uh, chase you around. So it's kind of like pushing you to go forward. Whereas it feel, yeah. it feel like there's a lot of dead air in uh, So like in the way that it works in Hades that I really like, or no, uh, Returnal that I really love, but like is it has sort of a Metroidvania thing to it because in every area so the so the for those who don't know the levels are procedurally generated so when you die and you go through the area again it's going to be different but every area has specific item like key item only items that you can get so i'm pretty sure there's like i think there's a grappling hook in it i just yes yes there is a grappling hook in it um there's some items that require you to have the grappling hook well you don't get that until like the second or third world so when you go through the area again, you can use all the grappling hook lo locations and get the upgrades that are up there. Or some require you to have the, like, jump upgrade, too. So it's like it has sort of a Metroidvania style to it. But I'm also... There's... I should let pe people know that they say that there's accessibility options to it. But as far as I know, the only accessibility options are um, color colorblind. If I remember correctly, someone please correct me if I'm wrong. But there, then there's also, like, changing the size of subtitles, which is fine and great, because definitely people need that. But at the same time, I feel like they could have done something really crazy w with this, what a lot of roguelikes don't, which is added more accessibility features, like having a difficulty option, or having a, kind of like how Hades has with its god, with its god mode that I've been using to great a effect to where like every time you die your defense goes up or you get more health or something like that because that would make me maybe want to continue going through it because again the difficulty jumps very heavily when you pass through different areas in returnal and you keep your health and the guns that you were using so you can jump into a new area and the gun that you're using just feels like a fucking nerf blaster i think um i think the build off 
I think to build off that, I think we can all kind of, kind of just like even generally agree that like, because this conversation is so applicable to like uh, the Souls Born series and um, just like mm-hmm. games of that ilk. It's just games having accessibility options and difficulty options is not an active detriment to the uh, quote unquote intended experience. Uh, it harms you in no way to have those in there. So every game should have them. Um, but what, one specific point I want to talk about on here, which is I'm, I think so, I know what say. I, I, I'm surprised slash not surprised that so many people are like rallying behind it is because it, it doesn't just, save. <laughs> there is there is no save feature in Returnal. Yeah, Fuck, we are in our God forsaken year of 2021 and you don't put a save feature into a game, which then the developers go, that's what rest mode is for. And then your game crashes in rest mode. Like, no. <laughs> no. I, like, like on one hand i'm just like not having a save feature does not add difficulty that's that's literally just a fucking inconvenience on like runs that can apparently like last up to like two three hours like the, like the further you get in yeah. um so i i think it's dumb that people are like rallying behind just no saving far is difficult i'm like what whatever dude i thought oh, saving I is Jim a detrimental Sterling said- fucking thing like I think Jim Sterling said it best where it's like this was this isn't even having the this whole like not having a save thing isn't even a fucking difficulty issue. It's just not. The fact that the get good fucking like mindset d- d- dipshits are making this like a difficulty thing is just so stupid. It's just a game design flaw that shouldn't be. Like every every roguelike and rogue rogue light or whatever like has this as a feature in some way. Um, like like enter the gungeon has it as a feature, and even if you don't want to ever like do that, if you personally want to just play through it and never use the save feature, let's say your game crashes and you lose an entire floor and enter the gungeon, it knows that and you continue as if you saved and you don't lose your progress. So like. Yeah, no, it's not a difficulty thing. It's just, it's just, it's an oversight, which I guess they've already said. I, I feel like they did say that they were going to look, they were looking into a way to implement the save system. The fact that they didn't think about it ahead of time is stupid it's, as hell. It's such a but, crazy freaking oversight. Well, and yeah, just, it did um, strike me that all the Twitter discourse I saw about Returnal was save states. It wasn't the actual difficulty of it, it wasn't any of the game design portions of it. It was people crying out to the Twitter gods saying, oh dear god, please don't update, please don't reset my PlayStation, <laughs> for the love of all that is holy, and the- nothing else about the game. So yeah, mm-hmm. it seems like a pretty massive oversight on their part. If, so, if, so. I, if I have to play this game knowing that someone else might be having fun with it in a way that I think isn't fun. I just can't have fun. That ruins my fun. Get fuck. Get the fuck over yourself. Get the fuck over yourself. Um, what one little side point that it struck me as weird is, and I know like the PS5 specifically has been having some weird, um, rust mode issues where you'll turn it back on and it, it's it's like not bricked, but it's just acting up. You have to like, uh pulled power cord and whatnot it, it, it's a bit weirder compared to yeah. the ps4 but just like s- such a central tenet of the way that i play games is i love suspend modes i love rest modes ever since the psp brought it on i'm just like yep this is how i'm gonna play fucking games so ps4 ps5 um xbox one switch w- whatever like if it has a rest mode i will always use it because it's convenient as shit um like that that's like so centrally a core tenet of why I want a Series X because you can suspend like up to, f- or I guess Roman, you know, you can suspend like up to five games, right? It's pretty amazing. I was playing, so yeah, several the, different games. Yeah, so okay. for the yeah. so for that feature, only some games support it, not all of them. It's the overwhelming majority, though, isn't it? Overwhelming majority do. I know for a fact that Outriders doesn't. Um, probably because it's online. Yeah, but but I know uh, I've tried to do it with Devil May Cry Five, a special edition, and it sometimes won't do it. So I mm-hmm. think it depends on the game that you're using. I don't know, Ramen, if you've come across that. Yeah, I, every game that I've played has acted normally and quite well. Honestly, like I was able to jump seamlessly between Assassin's Creed Odyssey and then Halo. 
some other games too. So to me, that's actually a pretty huge selling point of the Xbox Series stuff is being able to do that pretty seamlessly without any noticeable downtime mm. or issues. Whereas with the PlayStation Five, I'm rolling the dice. And, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Corey pointed <laughs> out uh, he says in chat, Jose was shocked by the fact I actually close my games down on Max when I'm done playing. I do because, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just weird to me because, like, that's just how I've played games for like freaking. I guess 10 plus years at this point. Uh, I don't know, like time estimate, whatever. But it's just it's just weird to me that people got out of their way to like manually close games. Like I, I just, maybe I just assumed that the overwhelming majority of people would just also use it. But I guess not. I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> um, and, then, and then just I don't even think we really want to touch on it because review score discourse is always fucking stupid people getting mad over low scores, high scores, whatever. Unless anyone else has their two cents they want to put in. It's stupid. The only two cents... <laughs> it is stupid. The only two cents I have to put on that is that I can understand on some level the the be, being upset. I mean, if we're even just going beyond, like, oh, the thing I like isn't being recognized, that pisses me off. Like, no, everybody feels that on some level but we normal people push that down and go it's okay for other people to not like the thing i like that doesn't make me my enjoyment of it ma- not matter but i do understand the fact that like the way the game industry games industry is now that someone sees the metacritic score go down on a game they really like their mind goes oh shit those developers might because of the fact that so much is tied into as far as bonuses possibilities of sequels possibilities of just furthering an ip in general the studio staying open even can sometimes hinge on a matter of like what single digit differences in metacritic i think the problem is that people's people then placing that that ire people placing that upset feeling at the feet of like games journalists who actually are putting the time in and doing their job and reviewers putting the time in and like trying to give their honest opinion when instead they should be putting it at the fucking feet of the corporations that they're just constantly sucking the dicks of like complain to Sony about like, Hey, this game shouldn't ha- be at risk of like never seeing a sequel because it got a Metacritic of like 70 versus another game that gets a 74 and you guys decide, okay, let's get a sequel like, or whatever. And you could just apply that to every single one of these publishers. Don't mm-hmm. get mad at reviewers. I mean, and get mad at a reviewer who actually maybe does do a shitty thing or is shown to be like a shill in some legitimately like shitty way. Cause it does happen every once in a while, but don't do this bullshit where like, but Blaine, fu- you can, you can trust them. They have a secret labs chair. <laughs> but listen, every hey, every, every but you haven't done a review, have, Sarah. That's the difference. Every day I have God. to see some new <laughs> asshole post that joked picture of Jeff Grubb and going "gotcha," and then I just roll my eyes and I'm just like, "Y'all, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of this fucking blaming journalists because game review scores are bad. Like, stop, just stop it." Yeah. Any thoughts, Roman? Yeah, I, you know, I, I struggled with game review scores when I started kind of writing my own reviews when I was younger, because that's what people go right to, right? They want to see the score, they want to see the outcome, they don't read the context of, of your review at all. And the more you boil it down to that review score, the more you prioritize it, the more your actual journalism or writing gets pushed to the side. And as admirable as it is to get rid of that, I could see a lot of publications being enslaved to giving out that review score because that drives the clicks. So I, I'm I'm with Blaine on this 100. percent That it's it's bullshit to sum up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 